Scientists have said that a huge earthquake is going to hit the southern San Andreas Fault, but revealed that we don't know when this is going to happen, but said it could be any time now. A fault line is basically a large crack in the earth, with the San Andreas Fault line being a strike slip fault. This event occurs when two tectonic plates slide past each other. Experts in California have said it's around 80 years overdue for the big one, which is the name that they've given to a massive earthquake that they said would devastate the area. The recent earthquake activity hasn't given scientists much hope either, with them noting that although the low tremors that hit Southern California back in June didn't do much damage, the big one would be an entirely different story, saying that the cost of damage could easily go to around 200 to 250 billion dollars, and that thousands of people could lose their life. The US Geological Survey has reported there's a 20 to 35% chance of the big one happening, with experts saying this would be around 7.5 to 8.5 in magnitude. USGS researchers have been studying the areas that would be at risk, and say that many factors play into this in regards to which areas would be affected the most. New estimations have also revealed that the big one may be even higher than 8 in magnitude. The area has been hit by a big earthquake in the past, with the last big one happening back in 1906, which was recorded as being a 7.9 magnitude earthquake, and that actually ended up moving the fault by 300 miles. 3,000 people lost their lives, and it's since become known as one of the worst earthquakes of all time. Over 80% of San Francisco had been destroyed, and large fires broke out that went on for days. One of the problems that scientists face is trying to predict when these large earthquakes are going to happen, with San Jose State University geologist Kimberly Blusnick saying the following, The San Andreas Fault is one of the best studied faults in the world, and there's still so much we can do. End quote. Back in 2019, researchers working in California reported that two large earthquakes had hit the region, they measured in at 6.4 and 7.1 in magnitude, and said that this raised the chances of the big one happening, saying that although it doesn't increase it by much, it could have increased the chances of it happening by 1-2% to within the next few years. John Vidal, a professor of earth science, said the following about the big one, and how it could devastate California. Here in California you have dangers from a number of different kinds of earthquakes, the major danger is from the earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault System. We haven't had a big earthquake in Southern California really since 1857, so basically we're overdue one. It's moving the ground several yards over an area of 50 square miles, so the power of a magnitude 7.8 earthquake is probably close to the power used in the whole state for a year. Basically something that we as a civilization have trouble creating sort of like a nuclear explosion. People have this idea of running out of bed and out of their buildings, and that's a terrible idea, because a lot of what we see in earthquakes is people with broken legs, and people who've run through glass. The best thing to do, like we always say, is duck cover and hold. Get under some piece of furniture. The main point is to protect your head and chest, because the San Andreas will produce the kind of long period of shaking which would be very damaging to very tall buildings, say in downtown LA, Century City and Long Beach, and so forth. Older steel buildings, the connections in them have not necessarily been designed to withstand the maximum forces that can actually be generated. End quote. Seismic expert Dr. Genneth Hudnut said the following, What's next is a really tough problem for us, but it's actually what everybody wants to know. But just because we can create a plausible scenario, does not mean it's going to happen. Seth Steen of Northwestern University said the following. The trouble is the uncertainties on all the numbers in this sequence are huge, and you're cascading those all together. Seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones said the following on social media. I'm surprised we haven't had it yet. We average 150 years between San Andreas events, and it's been 350 on the southernmost part, 
but we could actually go another 50 or more. The time between big quakes seems to be Poissonian. That means that the time since the last quake doesn't matter. One person asked whether we could get two big ones a matter of weeks apart, and she responded with the following. Absolutely. This graph is the time between big quakes at one location on the San Andreas Fault. The average is 100 years, but three times it was less than 50, and once more than 300. If they were one week apart, they would look like one event in the geology. End quote. The United States Geological Survey said the following about the 1906 earthquake. The San Francisco earthquake and fire of April 18th, 1906 took around 700 lives and caused millions of dollars worth of damage in California. The earthquake was felt as far away as Oregon and central Nevada. The 1906 earthquake has been estimated at a magnitude 8.3 on the richer scale. Surface offsets occurred along a 250 mile length of the fault. On May 18th, 1940, an earthquake magnitude of 7.1 occurred along a previously unrecognized fault in the Imperial Valley. Similar movement on the Imperial Fault occurred during an earthquake in November 1979. The greatest surface displacement was 17 feet of right lateral stroke slip in the 1940 earthquake. Clearly, this fault is part of the San Andreas system. Other earthquakes of probable magnitudes of seven or larger occurred on the Hayward Fault in 1836 and 1868 on the San Andreas Fault in 1838. End quote. As of right now, researchers have said that all they can do is keep an eye on any changes on the data, but I always end by saying that the big one is going to happen. It's just when. Antarctica is one of the least explored places on planet Earth. The first sighting of Antarctica is now acknowledged to have taken place around January 1820, and this was by two Russian ships. Fast forward to the 1930s, and teams of scientists and researchers have tried to extensively map and explore Antarctica, and although there's no permanent residents that call this place home, many workers do live in Antarctica, helping to study the environment and carry out scientific tests. Ever since early explorers touched down in this region though, there's been whispers of strange goings on throughout the area, leading amateur researchers to conduct their own research in order to get to the bottom of some of these mysteries. Most of these comments and theories usually stem from somewhere, whether it's a strange photograph taken from a satellite, or comments that have been made by early explorers. The reason why Antarctica is so fascinating to many people is because of how little we know about the area, and due to the constant findings that are being made on top of and below the ice. Only recently scientists had announced that there's an unseen world living beneath Antarctica, which likely hold thousands of new species which are not known to modern science. These incredible creatures can give us an insight into how animals can adapt to different environments, and we may be able to apply some of this information to places within our solar system. Being able to survive in these extreme environments is a perfect example of life finds a way. Back in December 1955, explorers mapped parts of Antarctica and revealed that they'd found a dome. Certain communities picked up on this and started saying that this is proof that something strange is happening in Antarctica, and this is the proof they needed. The book that detailed this is the 1958 Encyclopedia Americana. It reads as follows. These flights prove the inland areas to be featureless in character, with a dome 13,000 feet high at a latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. End quote. Those who believe the strange goings on in Antarctica, and believe this planet is different to this scientific belief, have said that scientists found a large dome above Antarctica, and this is the real reason why people can't go there or fly above the region. One person who believes in these theories said the following, This is the real reason why you can't visit and explore Antarctica. What many people don't know is that the air is heavily guarded by the government, 
and it's near impossible to fly above these regions. To me it sounds like they're trying to keep people out, and the reason they're doing this is because something is down there that they don't want the people knowing about. We now have proof of this huge dome down in Antarctica, and it wouldn't surprise me if this, along with other things, is the main reason why they're trying to stop people from going down there. End quote. Others carried on from this and said this is just one of the things that's been found in the region, going on to say that many explorers have detailed seeing other strange things when flying above the icy continent. One user said that every year satellites capture strange looking objects that appear to be embedded in the snow, saying that this could be proof of advanced civilizations that happened to live in this region thousands of years ago, or that it could show that large operations are being carried out here by governments across the world. And the reason some of these photographs are blurred is because they don't want us to know what's going on. Not everyone is entirely convinced though, and people quickly shut down these claims, saying that the people spreading the wrong message are those that don't understand the correct terminology. The truth here is that dome in terms of geology means a large structure that's formed by rock strata. These domes usually have an arch-like shape, and can reach thousands of feet in height. One good way of describing these domes is like someone cutting a tennis ball in half, although scientists have noted that not all domes are perfectly rounded. Some of the ways that these large domes develop is with the help of magma. This magma flow eventually pushes up surface rock layers, which in turn gives us this dome look. In fact, the official Antarctica website said the following about the discovery. Dome Arcus has a surface elevation of 4,093 meters, or 13,428 feet. It's the highest place in East Antarctica. It's also one of the least known places on the globe. An automatic weather station provides data from this remote site. Dome Arcus lies near one end of a ridge around 60 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide were 37.2 miles long and 6.2 miles wide. The ice there is more than 3,000 meters thick, overlaying the subglacial Gamvertsev Mountains. The world's lowest temperature ever recorded was minus 89.2 degrees, and this happened in July 1983 at the Russian station Vostok, in land of Australia's Cassie Station. Dome Arcus is nearly 600 meters high in elevation than Vostok, this means there's a good chance that the automatic weather station at Dome Arcus could record the world's lowest surface temperature. The coldest temperature to date was minus 82.5 degrees, and this happened in July 2005. The automatic weather station at Dome Arcus was set up as part of the Australian-Chinese collaboration in January 2005. No ground-based scientific investigation had been made at this site before the arrival of the Chinese Oversnow Transverse Team. The weather station measures wind speed, air temperature with sensors mounted on mast arms, at 1 meter, 2 meter and 4 meters above the snow surface. Snow temperature is 0.1 meters, 1 meter, 3 meters and 10 meters in depth. Atmospheric pressure, wind direction, incoming solar radiation, relative humidity and snowfall rate, end quote. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? And what do you make of some of the mysteries around Antarctica? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.